this first, sorry, I'm not looking at the right. Uh, so epistemology and microgenomics. Good morning. Uh, thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share some ideas that goes uh, beyond the technological aspect, uh, impressive technological aspect of this uh, symposium. Um, I would like to, I don't know, okay. I would like to briefly advocate for the fact that uh, microgenomics is uh, uh, not just a technological uh, opportunity. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, microgenomics addresses the issues of cellular diversity, the origins of diversity, the roles of uh, diversity. It's uh, obviously uh, uh, one of the main questions in, in uh, cellular biology, in biology in general. And uh, but strikingly, two of its uh, main epistemic uh, framework uh, are um, challenged this re in uh, the recent times. First framework is that uh, cellular diversity is uh, usually seen as the result of a regulated developmental program. And the second pillar it would be that multicellularity is usually described as a cooperation between cell of uh, clonal origins. Uh, the first pillar is uh, challenged by features of cell competition within organisms or features of uh, randomness and stochasticity in gene expression that have been described in the recent years. And maybe to a lesser extent, um, uh, the cooperative based on cell cells with the same genomes is a bit challenged by different features of variation even if we don't speak about microbiomes or chimerism, we could speak of point mutation, uh, copy number variation, mosaicism within organisms. So um, to summarize, cells that were long supposed to do the same things, in fact, do not. And cells that were long supposed to be the same, in fact, are not always so. So understanding uh, diversity and uh, the issue of diversity versus identity is uh, an important question in, uh, in biology, and I guess that microgenomics can, can help. Um, actually, this is a very old debate uh, in philosophy. Uh, Leibniz, and a debate that opposed many people, but uh, let's talk about two of, uh, two of them, Leibniz and, and Kant. Leibniz say that two objects can be labeled identical if they have the same uh, properties, which is a uh, reminiscent from uh, Plato's universal types. And, and Kant said that even if two objects have exactly the same uh, properties, they would not be the same. They would stay at least numerically different. So as biologists, uh, should we care of this uh, question? I, I guess we should. Uh, for example, uh, if we, uh, uh, we have long assumed that a given uh, genotype had been selected in order to generate uh, a phenotype under a certain uh, set of uh, conditions. Uh, but uh, what single cell studies have extensively shown and, uh, and microgenomics uh, does too is to show that there are many ways to, uh, many roads to uh, achieve uh, uh, functional identity and maybe uh, that uh, cells are a little bit more Leibnizian than uh, we could have expected before. If we go a little closer to uh, microgenomics, these are two word clouds that I have generated uh, by using uh, reference literatures uh, on uh, genomics and on more recent, of course, uh, microgenomics. Uh, you can see that these two clouds are, uh, are interesting. Uh, they, I would say that um, the first one, genomics, deals with uh, genes, genome, and DNA, which uh, is basically information that everything can be put in a computer. And uh, microgenomics seem to deal with uh, a material object, like a cell, obviously, and the way cell uses the so-called uh, information. Uh, this is no surprise for you, of course. And if I was to over-interpret a little bit uh, these two uh, word clouds, the very raw data, uh, I would say that uh, they depict uh, two uh, two different ways of being uh, identical or different. The first one, the genomic one, uh, deals with information, with precision, with regulation, and gives uh, uh, rise to abstract accounts of uh, identity, where uh, microgenomics deal with matter, with constraints, and also with uh, variation and randomness, and uh, uh, unravel 
force a different way to be to be the same, and we could, that could be called a, a probabilistic uh, similarity. And we can go further and, and show that uh, microgenomics can address a broad number of questions. For example, it can span from technical issue to very abstract issues, uh, and here clockwise the different disciplines in between, biological and epistemological one. For example, uh, the question of difference versus identity is uh, related to how many cell types do we have, for example, and biological question, differentiation, obviously, signaling, networks, what is stereospecificity. It can also impact uh, epistemological issues, like the fact that biological objects are not stable. So what does it mean to be the same when you are not stable? Or, uh, and the fact that experimental science needs typologies, even though if these objects are dynamic. And we can go also to the more abstract question that I have already uh, addressed. Uh, we can translate that into, into questions. And if we single out one, one question per, per, per field, I would say, uh, microgenomics can, can help, in a way, uh, uh, to maybe to, to count, to, to, to tell us if there are some hundreds of cell types or if there are as many cell types as, as there are cells, in a way. And uh, if differentiation ever achieved as a stable state, uh, is the fact that biological objects are not stable matter or not in a given biologic context? and to what extent, for example, two objects can be identical. So this question that microgenomics can help to, to, to rephrase or to, to redefine uh, can also uh, help us to, to move back toward and to redefine and to reinterpret uh, what we call difference and identity in, in biology. Uh, in order to finish, I would like to end with a sort of very short case study, which is a, a broad field of uh, stochastic gene expression, I guess. I do not need to convince you that uh, a large component of gene expression is uh, stochastic. This, is, uh, this has been heavily documented in the last uh, decades uh, in eukaryotes and in prokaryotes. Um, but this is the fact, and there is the interpretation of the fact. And there are still a lot of debates uh, regarding the idea, the, the role, the functions of, uh, of stochastic gene expression, whether it is background noise. Uh, coming from an, adapt an otherwise adapted fine-tuned system? Or is it a biological uh, parameter that can generate a useful uh, spontaneous uh, heterogeneity, uh, like exploratory behaviors or selective dy dynamics or competitive dynamics within an organism? So, of course, uh, microgenomics can help to, to answer the, the, the biological question, but in doing so, I guess it can also help to uh, address uh, more abstract issues, like is biology uh, order generating di disorder, or is biology disorder generating order? And, and this is a very important way to, to, to deal with biology, I guess. So to summarize, I would say that uh, obviously uh, uh, microgenomics is a, is a technical opportunity to refine our knowledge at lower levels of biological order, and it will produce fantastic results. <laughs> Um, no doubt about that, but it's also a promising tool to challenge our representation and to disentangle them from the biological facts. So there are many paths to follow. Thanks very much. If you measure uh, a certain number of variables in a cell, and you measure that in another cell and they look identical, there still may be hundreds of other variables that you can't measure or you are not sensitive enough to measure. You might say that those two cells are identical, but they're not at, the, at a different level. And how deep do you have to go before you say that they're identical? This is a problem in tissue analysis because we have experimentalists who look at two pieces of tissue and they measure in the proteomic world with a certain level of sensitivity that's fairly low, only looking at high abundance proteins. And so they see that both pieces of tissue look the same and they think that that means that there's no change due to, let's say, having the tissue sit out in a hypoxic condition after being removed from the patient. And so that lack of uh, 
getting down into the depths of the, of the measurement system into the, to the low abundance analytes causes us to make inappropriate uh, conclusions about two things being identical when they're really quite different. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so, so how how approach you the problem of the order generating disorder and disorder generating order? From from my naive perspective, I would favor disorder generating order because it fits in my opinion better to evolutionary aspects because it could be could offer ways to achieve new states that are of advantage for the progeny later on oh uh, again i would say that i i, I would favor well of course uh, uh, I would favor also the, the second one, but it, it, let's not be schematical. I mean, you have some, some issues where it's interesting and it's useful to, to start from the first hypothesis, but uh, if you favor the second one, uh, you have to remember that a lot of the knowledge of, on uh, molecular biology is directly inherited from the first one. I guess we are uh, used to describe the order that is uh, present in the biological system as a produce of a preceding order. And we are used to deal with the order, the disorder that is produced as a background consequence, as some noise, as something that is just the proof that the, it's not robot, it's biology. But uh, we do not tend in molecular biology to give so many space to disorder as we are used to do uh, in evolutionary biology. And this is why I guess microgenomics deals with the everyday with uh, variation I don't know if it's disorder or, or randomness, but at least it's variation uh, within so-called similar cells or, or similar tissues. And I guess they will unravel a large part of uh, variability and maybe uh, account it for a disorder and then maybe uh, could, it's, this could help to be used in order to describe accurately the way order is produced in a given tissue, not only by the accurate and precise um, uh, outcome of a program. Uh, these questions are very, very important, and I am not sure we are able to answer those yet, but uh, we will need to. Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. A couple of years back, we essentially took a, a cell culture and we picked individual cells and we profiled those. And they vary very much in expression profiles. And you can tell from where in the cell culture you picked the cells. And that was related to microenvironment because it's different access to oxygen, you have waste products, you have different neighbors. But that doesn't necessarily, in my mind, make the cells really different. In so it's, it's, a, it's a matter also of defining difference. So my question to you is really, because what this is, I think, is very, very critical, and that's a cell type. How do you define a cell type? <laughs> I, I, I would say I would define the cell type, uh, to my opinion, the cell type that's a group of cells that are interesting enough to address the function that I'm looking at as a biologist. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's also driven, it's, kind of driven by the result I expected to, to, to achieve, I guess. There's, there's no, uh, the, the problem of the type is a huge problem in biology, in science in general, but I guess there are no types. There are no types. Types are first approximation that are useful for us to study and to uh, try to start to understand a given pathway, but I guess there are no types. I could contradict you for sure. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so, all right, so thank you very much. We'll switch to the next short talk, which is uh, from Dr. Bertrand on cell encapsulation for multiplex filter on a chip. <laughs>